week nine of the fantasy baseball season and here's a few pitches i look to buy and trade for this week the first guy dylan sees of the chicago white Sox. as sees it's been an up and down season this year but for the most part the numbers have been down 62 and two-thirds three and three record 68 k's 4.880 ERA, a 1.40 whip and five quality starts after last season was a monster year for him 14 and 8 with 227 strikeouts and a 2.20 ERA. so right now this white Sox team it's been a weird season for them so far and Dylan sees obviously hasn't been putting up the numbers like he did last season and that ERA been hovering around the five the whole year and the last couple weeks here for C's one and one record 16 and a third 14 K's of 4.96 ERA 1.29 whip and two quality starts so right now Dylan sees obviously numbers on where they gotta be the only thing that's been staying the same is the strikeout rate is still pretty solid here for Dylan Cease on the season, but he's been getting hit hard. The teams, they've been catching up to him over the last few weeks here. And right now, we'll see if he could turn things around because he does play in a division where there's not great hitting teams like the Royals, Guardians, and the Tigers, even though those teams have hit him pretty decent over the last few outings. May 18th versus the Guardians, six and the third got the loss. Five hits, three runs, a walk, three Ks, a quality start. May 23rd at the Guardians, six innings got the win. Five hits, two runs, two walks, three Ks, a quality start. And then May 28th at the Tigers, it was a tough one for him. Four innings in that game, four hits, four runs, four walks, eight Ks. So right now the walks are hurting him. His velocity, pretty much the same. And the strikeouts, pretty much the same. But everything else, the location and control has been an issue for C. So right now, while he's trying to work that kinks out a little bit more, C's here. He's definitely a pitcher with good upside, and you don't got to give up much to get him on your roster, especially where it's tough to find pitching nowadays. So Cease is a pitcher I think could turn things around, and who I would buy this week in his next outing is June 3rd. Versus the Tigers once again, the next pitcher is Charlie Morton of the Atlanta Braves. So Morton, it's been an up-and-down season for him as well. A great run he was on, and now the last couple outings, he's struggling. But Morton, we know for the most part at the latter part of his career here he's been a second half pitcher for whatever the case may be here on the season for morton five and five record 57 and two-thirds 63 k's at 3.59 era a 1.47 whip and five quality starts but the last couple weeks here he's been rocked 10 and a third 0 and two record 14 k's at 6.97 era and a 1.94 whips i think morton could be a decent start of the remainder of the season got one of the better offenses in the league backing him obviously with this Atlanta Brave team and right now yes he's been a five or six inning pitcher at best is Charlie Morton but I think that's good enough to help fantasy owners the six starter on the roster so the last few games here for Morton May 15th at the Rangers six and two thirds got the win seven hits no runs a walk 10 K's a quality start May 22nd versus the Dodgers five innings got the loss seven hits six runs Two walks, five Ks, and May 27th versus the Phillies. Five and a third got the loss in that one. Seven hits, two runs, four walks, nine Ks. So, last outing, the control was an issue. And this Brave team, believe it or not, they've been slumping over the last week, week and a half here. They lost the series to Philly, and now coming off a series losing to the Oakland Athletics. Two out of three, so now they're versing the Arizona Diamondbacks coming up in the next series. And Morton's next outing is June 2nd tomorrow at the Diamondbacks where I think he could go in there he could pitch the baseball pretty decent I know the Diamondbacks are having a solid season so far but I still think their offense is vulnerable where Morton could turn things around so right now where the last couple outings he hasn't done much and you could buy him on a little bit of a discount this would be the time to do it the next guy is Logan Gilbert of the Seattle Mariners so Gilbert came up last season and he was great for this Mariners team of fantasy owners is one of the top prospects in all major league baseball last season and so far this year the numbers are still pretty decent i believe 64 innings three and three records 73 k's a 4.08 era 0.98 whip and six quality starts on the season but the last couple weeks here it's been a mixed bag of results 18 innings two and one record 19 k's 4.50 era 0.89 whip and two quality starts so right now gilbert he got hit pretty hard in his last outing versus the New York Yankees and right now this Yankee team they've been on a great run and it might discourage fantasy owners from selling Gilbert or they might not even care that much after one bad outing and obviously hold on to him so the last few outings for him he was great until getting rocked by the Yankees May 20th at Atlanta six innings got the win four hits two runs a walk nine K's a quality start 
May 25th versus the A's, eight innings in that one, got the win. Three hits, two runs, six Ks, a quality start. And then the last outing, May 30th versus the Yankees. He got rocked four innings, got the loss. Seven hits, five runs, a walk, four Ks in that one. So his next outing, I think he could turn things around as Logan Gilbert. He's a top talent from the minor league system last season for a reason here for this Mariners the team. And they had a lot of confidence to put him in the rotation early last year. And it paid great dividends with a 13-6 and six record. And this season, I think he's going to continue to be good. It's one bad outing. And if you could catch an owner off guard who obviously looks too much into that Gilbert outing where he had a bad one versus the Yankees, this would be a time to pounce because if he gets back on track, he's Gilbert. His value would definitely be way up there once again. And like I said, he's got top of the rotation stuff for fantasy owners where he could be a second to fourth starter range depending who's on your team. The next pitch is Alex Cobb of the San Francisco Giants. Alex Cobb, he's been pretty decent this season here. Four and two records, 62 winnings, 57 Ks, 3.05 ERA, a 1.40 whip, and five quality starts. I know there's not a great offense over there in San Francisco back in Cobb, obviously, but he's been pitching good. But the last couple weeks, he's reverted a little bit to his old ways from a few seasons ago. We struggled 11 innings, 1-1 one one record, 13 Ks, and 8.18 ERA, a 1.64 whip and a quality start in the time. Sakabia, the last two out of three outings have been tough for him, no doubt about it. But I think he's a solid pitcher. He keeps the ball in the ballpark, a lot of balls on the ground as well. And I think he'll bounce back just some bad outings versus pretty decent hitting teams. May 16th versus Philly, 3-3rd and third in that one, no decision, 5 hits, 2 runs. Five walks, three Ks. May 23rd at the Twins, seven innings, got the win. Six hits, three runs, a walk, eight Ks in that ball game, a quality start. And May 28th at the Brewers, four innings, got the loss. Seven hits, seven runs, four walks, five Ks. So right there, obviously a bad outing for Alex Cobb in that one. The Brewers had his number in that ball game, but I think he could bounce back versus a decent Baltimore Oriole team in his next start in June 3rd. But right now, while Cobb's had some bad outings, the last two out of three, and to be honest, some owners have dropped him in 5% of fantasy leagues. I think you could get him on a discount this week, and he definitely can help owners. I believe in the fifth and final pitch I look to buy and trade for is Justin Verlander. The New York Mets are Verlander so far in his first season with the Mets. It really hasn't been good for the most part. He missed the first month of the season with injury. And now it's been one good start and one bad start. Every other outing on the year, 30 innings, 2-2 two and two record, 22 Ks. 4.80 ERA, a 1.10 whip, and two quality starts on the season. So Verlander, a month in now, he's been in the rotation with the New York Mets. And like I said, a mixed bag of results. Last season, we know he won the Cy Young was Verlander. But this year, the stuff is a little bit flat, and good hitting teams have taken advantage of Verlander for the most part. It was the last few outings, May 16th versus the Rays, five innings, got the loss. Eight hits, six runs, two walks, three Ks in that ball game. May 21st versus a weak Guardian hit, hitting team. He came back with a vengeance. Eight innings, got the win. Three hits, a run, no walks, five Ks, a quality start. And then Coors Field, May 27th, he gave up five consecutive hits in that ball game. Five innings in that one, no decision, luckily. Nine hits, six runs, though, a walk, two Ks. So right now, it's been a tail with two tapes, like I mentioned, for Verlander. One good outing, one bad outing. His next outing is definitely a tough one coming up tomorrow, June 2nd, versus the Toronto Blue Jays. And obviously, you have a great hitting team with Boba Chet, Vlad Guerrero Jr. in the lineup. Matt Chapman having a bounce back here. So it's going to be a challenge for Verlander. But we know he's still got ace-type stuff. We've seen it on display a little bit this season. And consistency's just got to be the key. So right now, while he's been an up-and-down pitcher so far and injured in the first month of the season, it's a good time to buy Verlander low because he definitely could be a guy that could go on the run in the next few weeks. That's a few pitches to look to buy and trade for here in week nine of the fantasy baseball season.